Hello, and welcome to this brief introduction of Direct CSI. My name is Daniel Boldivia, and I'm an engineer here at Minayo. I want to introduce you to the topic of Direct CSI by telling you about the problem that Direct CSI is trying to address. Right now, let's say you have uh, some applications that are running in a distributed fashion on your Kubernetes cluster, and these applications, they are presenting some type of data service uh, to your other applications. Therefore, these guys need persistent volume underneath. So they'll be claiming this persistent volume storage via persistent volume claims. And in turn, these PVCs, the CSI driver that you have on your Kubernetes cluster may actually be provisioning from a variety of sources, right? It could be a SANAS, uh, it could be on the same device by chance. Usually DevOps and engineers don't really worried about that much, but if your CSI driver ends up provisioning some type of storage that's living on some other drive on some other node. Now, every time you are actually, your application is accessing a request through your application, you're paying the tax of this network call, right? So the, this network call is taxing all the throughput and all the uh, operations that, that are going to your application, right? So this is one of the problems, right? So for applications that are quite, in, quite intensive, when, when you have this additional tax, they bring down the overall throughput and performance of the system together. So to address this, we can actually use a specialized structure that Kubernetes supports called local persistent volumes. Local persistent volumes is as simple as mapping a local drive that you have on, on the node to present it as a persistent volume. And then the, the Kubernetes scheduler will actually take care of making sure to schedule pods on the same node where the local persistent volume is allocated. Now, this is like a nice solution that, you know, you, know, you can manually create these local persistent volumes and have them allocate, uh, have them have affinity to the node where they are actually being modeled for. And this solves part of the problem. But then in reality, the, your applications don't tend to look like this, right? You're running multiple copies. Therefore, now the more copies of your applications that you need to run, you need to now start managing more local persistent volumes. And in reality, you usually run multiple copies of these applications, all, all intermingle, right? So you just ask Kubernetes, run this many copies, and you're expecting the storage to just be satisfied. And so in, in reality, you end up having multiple PVCs requesting multiple local persistent volumes, sometimes on the same disk, right? And sometimes you end up with multiple disks, right? So now if, if this uh, scenario arises where you're actually provisioning the PVCs that are being allocated and stored in different drives, or anything, it becomes complicated or harder to manage. So that is, a pro that is one of the problems, right? So you could try to address the persistence volume uh, taxing problem over the network that I was describing earlier by doing local persistent volumes, but as you are adding more scale, the problem becomes more complex, right? That's the problem with managed local persistent volumes, right? This is something where you will have to develop some very tidy discipline to actually keep uh, the show running and not running into any sort of problem. Now, what DirectCSI is trying to address is the following. It's trying to keep a constant complexity that grows with scale, that, that is constant with scale. So if you want to be adding more nodes to your infrastructure, you want to uh, be growing and growing and just be able to say, have your applications request storage that's local and it gets satisfied automatically. So that's what DirectCSI does, right? DirectCSI brings that to the table where the provisioning of, of these uh, local persistent volumes is automatic. DirectCSI will detect all the locally attached storage to the Kubernetes nodes and it will actually manage it for you. So if I could summarize it, you could think of DirectCSI as a dynamic local persistent volume provisioner. So that's, that's, that's the way, best way to understand it because you don't, you, now in the sense of if you're the owner of the infrastructure, what you're going to be doing as you're adding more nodes to your community's cluster is just attaching local storage for them and then just letting DirectCSI take, take over those as we'll see in a moment on the demo. And some of the things that make DirectCSI great is that, you know, it's cloud native, it's built only for Kubernetes, it's performant because, you know, nothing beats local storage. When you're for your applications, especially when you're being very large, very high performance applications that you're running them on your Kubernetes cluster, nothing beats local storage. And it's very simple. And the beauty about simplicity is that it scales. So that, that's the, the three uh, core uh, features that uh, DirectCSI is bringing to the table. So at this point, I would like to take take a, a break from the slides and then give you a, a walkthrough through 
how to actually install DirectCSI, deploy an application. In this case, I'll be deploying a MinIO object storage that's just requesting storage out of Kubernetes and getting it satisfied by some CSI. In this case, DirectCSI will be the one that satisfies the requirement. So let's go into the demo now. So I like to start the demo by actually installing DirectCSI, the kubectl plugin, right? This is extremely easy. With any modern kubectl, you can just do kubectl crew install DirectCSI. And this is actually bring the plugin to your local system. Now that you actually, after you actually have executed this command, you now can do kubectl DirectCSI install, which will actually install all the required resources on your cluster, as well as detect all the locally attached drives and announce them under the DirectCSI drives uh, CRD. This is pretty much it, and that's it. Uh, now we're ready to go. So now if you're type uh, kubectl DirectCSI drives, you can see you have a few subcommands here ready, right? You can see access steers, format, list the current set of drives, release and unrelease them. So let's do something along the lines of seeing what I have on my system by typing list. So here you can see I have a plenty of NVMe drives uh, as long as other type of devices mounted on my, my computers. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I wanna format all these 932 gigabyte drives, right? So uh, these are partitions on all of these NVMe drives uh, that I actually wanna use. Uh, so I'll, I'll go with all my drives from one to 10 and only that partition one. So let's do that now. So to achieve that, I'm just gonna type a format command. And now, that. This is, this is the command where I'm actually telling, okay, these are only the specific devices that I want you to format, right? And that's it, right? I'm just, let's just hit run. That's it. So now let's list the drives again and see what's the status of the drives. I can see that all the drives that I wanted to actually start using and consuming are actually ready for consumption. So that's all I need to do, right? And even if I were to check on my kubectl uh, get storage classes, I will see that now there's a direct CSI class that I can start using right away in my applications. In this case, let's set up an, a MinIO object storage uh, application uh, that will actually house um, some data and we'll actually be using this storage class. So uh, th this is what I wanna show you now. So, so far, we just installed direct CSI. It immediately detected all the locally attached volumes across all the machines that I have now I just format them, right? This made them available immediately to the cluster. So now what I'm gonna do is install, right? So some object storage, just to showcase the, the, the usage of this CSI driver. So let's install MinIO really quick. So I'll do kubectl crew install MinIO, right? So this is also gonna bring the kubectl plugin. And now I can just do MinIO init. And this will install the latest MinIO operator. That's it. I even get a suggestion on how to get uh, a nice port forwarding started. So if I run this kubectl minio proxy command, I can see that uh, I get a, a JWT token for authentication and, and even the nice a nice address that I can just visit on my uh, local browser. So after going to localhost 9090, you're gonna be greeted by a login screen where you can actually paste the JWT token that was granted by the uh, kubectl minio proxy command. And you're, then you're inside the MinIO operator UI where we can, you can quickly provision object storage. So case in point, let's, big, let's do some big, big data storage for US West. Uh, I'll place this on a namespace in Kubernetes and you can see that I get the, the list of storage classes that I have available on this cluster. In this is particularly the DirectCSI uh, storage class was installed when, after we installed uh, DirectCSI. So I'll go with four servers, let's say 10 drives per server. And right now let's go with something conventional, uh, 10 terabytes of capacity for the moment. And that's it, let's just keep it at that. I'll just hit create, and that's gonna pretty much um, give me a set of credentials that I'll be using to access my tenant once it's provisioned. I'll back those up. And now uh, I'll just wait. So now let's go and see what's happening behind the scenes on this Kubernetes cluster. So if I do now kubectl get pods on that namespace that we just saw, um, I see that my, my pods are pending. So what about the PVCs, right? So have they been created? Yes, and they're slowly being satisfied, right? I can see all these PVCs getting created. And at the same time, all these PVs that belong to this direct CSI class are also being created. So now this is all of, all of these PVCs that were requested uh, by my stateful sets are in turn getting satisfied by direct CSI with these underlying uh, slices of the, um, of the underlying volume. If you recall, I had 932 something gigabyte NVMe sticks. And now I'm actually getting these chunks of 256 out of those drives. And that's it. 
right? So as simple as that. Now let's let's see my pods. They are now all up and running, which is super nice. Now, if I were to go back to DirectCSI and ask it, okay, DirectCSI, what's going on with my cluster? I want to understand how many volumes, how much capacity have you used? Uh, I could go back to drives and list them. I will see that immediately out of all these uh, locally attached NVMEs that I have on my system, some capacity has already been used, and there's actually one volume inside of them. Right, these are the these these volumes represent the PVs that were created to satisfy the PVCs for my stateful set. But I, I now I have some nice way to understand okay what what is the usage on which machine, right? So I also get that information. Uh, if I want to, I could also go and list the volumes, right? So get a nice list of volumes and see what's going on. Uh, I see other applications that were deployed use, uh, using stable sets. They are smaller drives, five gigabytes. They just requested storage using this storage class and they, they were satisfied immediately. And I didn't have to actually go on a per machine basis selecting, okay, let me slice some of these uh, drives and allocate it and give it to this application. It's all been done for me, right? It, it's all been auto automatically by direct CSI. I don't have to do much in the sense of uh, right M managing all this stuff and this is how you actually scale right so when as you as you're adding new nodes all you need to come and tell uh the direct exercise whether you want to format those new nodes those new drives uh and then that that direct direct csi will do the rest right your applications only need to start using the same storage class and that's it this is how you can scale without complexity right so just to summarize what you just saw in my demo i show you deploying a stateful application in this case aminio Right, I, I deployed multiple pods across my cluster. Uh, I also had a bunch of uh, nodes, right? And the, the interesting thing about the nodes that I was showing you during my demo was that they had a bunch of locally attached volumes, different types, right? In my, specifically in my case, I had 10 MBME sticks that I wanted to use for my object storage deployment because I want to be performant. And I had some solid state drives or some other type of drives, right? I didn't want to use them. Right, so you saw me that when I was actually formatting my drives, I only selected my NVMe drives. I didn't want to use my SSD. They may be the operating system drives. Actually, those won't won't be shown. But you you have the option, right, to create multiple classes uh, when you are using uh, organizing them through the CSI to be presented uh, to the application itself. Now, my application itself uh, was a stateful set that was creating uh, multiple PVCs, right? Uh, so. The, the, the key component here was that all these PVCs were satisfied with local persistent volumes. Actually, these were our pure persistent volumes, but these guys are actually managed by direct CSI. Direct CSI dynamically provision each one of these guys, right, and satisfy the PVC. And at the same time, make sure that all these uh, persistent volumes that were being provisioned for the uh, persistent volume claims uh, were together, right, and telling the Kubernetes scheduler, hey, look, uh, whenever you schedule this pod, I need it to be on this node because all its storage is here, right? So uh, we have some nice integration with the scheduler. So any application today, right, doesn't need to have any change in it, right? So only when you're selecting the storage class, that's all that matters to get direct CSI integration integrated into your application. And everything that you need to get started is pretty much tell direct CSI, look, uh, I want you to take either these many nodes or these, these many drives across all nodes, right? So if you have some, some infrastructure that looks the same, it's as simple as that. You don't have to do any complicated setup or anything. And this is how you can actually scale very large, right? Now, every time you do a new node, you're going to fire up your direct CSI CLI and format those new drives, and that's it, right? Applications can now start expanding into the, those new nodes. So really, you don't have to add any additional complexity, any other piece of software, anything else that you need to manage, because even direct CSI, you know, once the drives are there, everything is local between the application and the drives. So it's pretty efficient in that sense. So to summarize, um, what I want to, what I want you to walk away from this video, thinking about direct CSI, is fears that this really simplifies the provisioning of locally attached drives. Yeah, long under, gone are the days where you actually have to do all of this manual work, right? Scripting the local persistent policies, etc. You saw, it's that simple. So this idea for applications that take care of data resiliency, direct CSI is not going to add some redundancy to the data or du duplicate stuff remotely, anything, nothing that, you know, old uh, legacy block storage will give you. This is for, meant for applications that will take care of the data resiliency themselves. This works the same way for bare metal as I was showing you, 
and as well as any other cloud provider. When you go to any cloud provider and you select one of those machines that have locally attached volumes, they'll come with locally attached NVMe, SSDs, hard disk drives. Still, you still need to uh, format those guys, right? Manage them and, and do stuff. DirectCSI can take that over that work for you. So you get a consistent uh, workflow, both for bare metal and cloud. So it has seamless integration with the scheduler. You don't have to do anything else. So just deploy direct CSI format and use the storage class. Done. It's that simple. And lastly, this is designed for IO intensive applications because when you're when you really need to squeeze that uh, performance of the hardware, nothing beats direct access to the hardware, right? Nothing beats it locally attached volumes. So that that's this is the, probably the key point for for um, direct CSI. And this is what I want you to take away. So once again, thank you for your time. Um, please hit us up on Twitter if you have any questions. Uh, fork us on GitHub. Uh, join our Slack and hang out. If you have any more questions, come and ask us or go visit our website at minai.io. Uh, my name is Daniel Baldivi again, and have a nice KubeCon.